I can see the bomb plant and let that economy build up just that little bit more. He's now been spotted though from the orb wielding Woxic down on the B side, who's trying to just play possum, waste as much time as possible for Emor to come in alongside him. Nice shooting from Yoda. Unfortunate not to get any kills out of this, though he does get one right in the Dying Embers. How he survived this long, I will never understand. This guy must be made of iron. And finally, Kallax will smelt him down and put him in one of his magazines for future use. Six to two, the score. MIBR without a bomb plant. They can still squeak out a buy, but there's going to be a couple players that are feeling a little bit worse for wear. Yeah, Cello's going to be a little low because he, he did go for that uh, bit of uh, investment. But apart from that, the majority of them should be able to eke out a pretty solid buy. Might even see an AWP come out to play here if they do want to go for it. Turn fire right now. They should be feeling reasonably, slightly happy with the way things have turned out thus far. Well, utility being lobbed in here from Eternal, from MIBR. Breaking open the squeaky. MIBR is trying, hoping to find something in the smoke. Eternal fire though, they're pretty comfortable. Wrapping a few bullets, keeping MIBR pinned down. I would like to see a little bit more presence from uh, MIBR towards outside. As you pointed out, Vince, like the, we haven't really seen too much of outside presence for them. And Xantaris is the guy who's playing outside. And as long as he has eyes towards the yard and knows there's no pressure there, he can easily provide information. Was that a miss smoke? I don't think so. I think there's a Molotov to prevent them from pushing in through towards the smoke. Because they smoke secret as well. No, there we go. It's a bit of a delay. What is that, Taris? Okay. The, a lunatic just runs out and finds exit, but he will be traded. Now, if that trade gonna come and hurt them is a question. Even though he finds one, losing a member for his team is not exactly ideal. That's gonna force Walks down towards the lower bomb set where he is right now, the sole defender. Off train in the position of secret. So now at least they still have control of secret, allowing the remaining members of his teammates to head up towards the upper bomb set where X Flout, he finds the timing and catches Cello. Yoda's already got a forward position just next to the vents, though. May catch someone, I don't know where is, but the bomb's down. No matter what they do on the A side, the bomb is in such a horrible spot. x Flout has been unweeded from Turtle, though. It's at the cost of 25 HP. Aimor oh. has to do better from that spot. Everything was based around him getting one frag. There were seven seconds to go. That would have been the bomb spilled down. And although a headshot connects onto Yota, it's just not good enough. And the Brazilians crowbar brute force their way into a round, which when you look at the positions of where Eternal Fire was sat with the time that was left, should never be winning that round. I know what sort of a turtle he is. He, that's a snapping turtle. He, th he had no bit, like you said, Vince, like sure, he gets the first one, the second kill, fantastic. The third one on Emor, he, he should have been dead to right. Somehow rips his head off his shoulders. 13 to six for turtle. And his team combined to have 14. He has been phenomenal here on the T side. And still very early. There's nine rounds being played thus far. And Turtle, he's showing why, he's in, why he is in this team. Uh, a bit of a quieter start thus far for Yota. We saw how fantastic he was in, 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 uh, in Vertigo, or the, on the CD side especially. Maybe he's kind of a CD specialist, right? Maybe it's, a, it's still being pretty effective. Five kills for him. Exit has been comparatively very quiet. As you do have game resuming here. The buy is going to be coming in for Eternal Fire. However, they are starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel. AWP, four Woxic, three M4A1s, and the 5-7 for Kallax here. If MIBR are able to take this round away for Eternal Fire, it could be an eco here. But Santaris looking to take matters into his own hands, and he will indeed do so. Done 22 AP, but he will find Cello. But okay, Turtle, the guy. He does vision. Vince, what was that for Emor? It's pure game sense, pure hours in the game, knows the lineup, takes the shots and gets the reward for his troubles. 14 kills now in just nine rounds, moving through to what he'll hope is a happy climax come the end of this one. He has been phenomenal. He has very much been the Yota of Nuke, picking up the slack, picking up the mantle. But Eternal Fire are still in with a shot. Zantares may be low from his early incursions outside, 
but his teammates are healthy. One of which is Woxic watching the ramp with his AWP. 50 seconds to play with, doesn't take the shot for the first player, assuming that it is a bait, and the flash will allow them safe passage. He respects this, just backs away slightly. Another flash, has no backup. Woxic will have to do this alone, and I do like the idea and the decision to back out of there and not give his life away for freeze. And Tarez is making flanking maneuvers outside, however, in amongst all of this, and he's getting a lot of information. But more importantly, if NIBR don't pull the trigger and get onto this site soon, he's gonna have impact on top of it. Kallax stuck in the hut, not required, because x Floud comes in for two. Zentara's position is spotted, and he is put down in his grave, but the rest of his teammates on the side of MIBR are not able to take the site and make it theirs. Eternal Fire pick up their seventh. What a round from x -Cloud. 13 and 3. We, we speak about Turtle being massive for his team. x was magnificent in that hole. He was pretty much all by his lonesome on the bomb side. And the Flames, using the T's own Molotov against them, they couldn't really spot him on top of the the flames and the soot on top of the uh, of the of the of the Molotov, and then he was just patiently waiting, lying in wait, finds a second, finds both the kills, and then in the end, finishing it off with a nice little triple. That's gonna force MIBR to once again have to work with the pistols here. And Zantaris. Ooh, he's been good for at least one kill, seemingly every round towards its outside area. He's gonna go trying to snipe away with an M4. Doesn't really have any backup. I, I'm not necessarily a very big fan of how aggressive he's been in this outside position, where he finds one and immediately gets traded, or he just got... <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> That shot was disgusting. Yeah, it's against an eco, but <laughs> that was so sick. That was so, so sick from Zantaris. That that is that's the Zantaris that people have known and loved for the the better part of three or four, five years even. When he first burst on the scene, he was known as just this mechanically ridiculous player that performed really well online, but when it came to lands, never quite shone the same. I think he's turned that around now. I think he's proven himself a bit of a land beast when he's called upon, and obviously, we have to jinx him. We talk about him, and he has his head caved in from Exit's the Eagle, but the damage has already been done surely. They line up, Woxic takes down one. They nearly actually lined up for a collateral shot there, but Yota and Exit are able to plunder their way down into secret, or at least Yota is. Exit's just lagging behind a little bit. And Yota does have the bomb, taking hefty damage in the process, but one Deeks X Cloud? Okay. How is that even possible? And considering this is a post plant now, one of which is low, there was a way forward for Yota to have some serious impact. Even a bomb plant out of that round, all win. things considered, is, is pretty huge, and two kills on top of it. That got a little scary. Walks it was down to two points of health as well, mind you. They turn the fire, and we'll get their eighth. It was, uh, uh, okay. They will get their eighth, I repeat. <laughs> but yeah, it might be our making them sweat a little bit, making them suffer a couple of casualties, and, uh, Despite the lead being eight and three, you can see the, the economy of Eternal Fire isn't exactly looking supremely comfortable, right? You can see Emor, you know, down to sub 1,000, X Cloud as well, Calix and fifty dollars as well. So, it might be our a couple of good street, a couple of good rounds coming up from them right now, and they could just break the economy. And even though they can't get the lead in this half, six rounds on the T side, for example, maybe potentially even seven if you're being extremely optimistic for the Brazilians, very much within the realms of possibility here. Once more, they're going to be deploying the wall of smokes towards outside. Zantaris is going to go poking and prodding is the question. Emor waiting patiently next to the vent, but they're going to completely avoid him. And it is going to be Kallus to find one, though. Emor is still waiting around the corner. He needs to find a kill here, but he will get traded immediately. And in the blink of an eye, everyone falls for Eternal Fire. Woxic left wondering how it all went wrong. Although that being said, Exit is so very low in health. Woody is down to 46 points of health as well. So Woxic. This is within the realms of possibility, Vince, but does he go for the save looking at the money? Hmm. Well, he is the man to make the call. That's the IGL. Wood is likely to die unless the smoke comes out afterwards. I'm surprised if you throw in the Molotov, you need to check it for at least a second to see if the player leaves. Pulling the smoke out right afterwards seems like a bit of a strange decision to me. But regardless, Woxic's about to walk into Yota, completely unbeknownst to him. 
Maybe anticipating that if a player's on 100 HP, they may take an extra second to peek. So maybe like to play Devil's Advocate, that's yep. why he pulled the smoke out. And plus the fact there was so little time on the clock as well in terms of the bomb detonating. So fair enough, but still like, should he have just saved? At that point, yeah, I really feel like he should have just saved. Maybe there was a little bit of comms coming in from his teammates, and a couple of them were really low. So he, and they were kind of low, in fact. So maybe hoping to find a couple of kills and pull off uh, another miraculous clutch. But because of that, Vince, the I'm not. Ooh, was that a miss by Zantaras? Uh oh. Uh, oh, 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 they're gonna go for it. Well, it looks like it could be a force. Yep, yep, it definitely is a force right now. Now I don't know if it's predicated of the fact of the of the fact that Zantaras went for that or misbought or he just went for the call because he's the first one to go for the mass buy and everyone's like well screw it let's go for it round number 13 three remains to be played in this half mibr they have successfully almost virtually broken the economy and in fact it might e depending on your school of thought you can even say they have broken the economy because it's a famas two five sevens an mp9 and a solitary well you know good gun so to speak in codes is that off in the hands of uh, Wong Sing. But here we go, fast play coming into the upper bombs that we've seen this only a couple of times here. Okay, exit, that's your teammate there, son. There's no one in the upper bomb set, and that is such a fantastic call coming for MIBR. They find an empty bomb site, and if I MIBR, do you go for the safe right now? Because you haven't lost any members. Or do you try and go for the retake? And it looks like the call is for the save indeed, Vince. And I think that is going to be the right call indeed. One of the unicorn rounds coming out here, especially in a map like Nuke. Where the bomb gets planted and the T's are gonna win it with no one, no one dying in the server, no casualties. But MIBR, they get their fifth. Great call from, uh, from MIBR there. Yeah, excellent call, all things considered. And keep in mind as well, this was preordained. They knew this. They had a MAC-10. They purchased the MAC-10, even though they had more than enough funds on multiple players to get an extra AK-47. So this was by design. This was preordained and it's had the required and requested outcome that being said though because eternal fire have saved all of their weapons they're good to just go again they're going to be maybe coming in with a, a similar kind of mentality what i'm curious with is with mibr upgrading their mac 10 to an ak-47 do we see something a little bit faster pace and I think it just completely caught Eternal Fire off because for the most part, over the duration of both of these maps, Blair, MIBR have played like a pretty slow, steady, stagnant kind of T side. It's been methodical and they are going to go in again hard. Exit though walks in by himself but he gets punished and now the cavalry arrives. Exit and Turtle decide this site is theirs. And as they plant a, a flag into the A site, they fully plundered it, they fully pillaged it and now they want to watch it raise to the ground. And I don't think Eternal Fire are going to fight too hard to reclaim what was once theirs. Yeah, you can see they were trying to work with the weaponry they had from the previous round. And they still have that op in hand to walk sick. Now, they can still leak out a pretty decent buy here later on. Santaris can drop a rifle, maybe even drop his FAMAS towards Calyx. The next one could drop one for Emor, but right now, MIBR. We said it earlier, Vince. You know, a little bit of a... A little bit of like a, I don't know, like a jump, a little bit of pep in their step in the past few rounds. It's been much more faster, much more convincing, much more committed. <laughs> X-Cloud trying to be a little cheeky there, but he will be taken down. And there we go. They're back. <laughs> they are back. All right, yeah. I understood some of that one. <laughs> okay. Can't repeat it. Let's just say he's amped. He's hyped. He's hyped, yeah. He's happy there we to go. be here. He's happy I to be alive. I mean... When we're, uh, you know, sometimes when even when we're sitting down, some of the after parties in the bar, we also like to yell a bit, Vince. It's totally fine. Watch, especially when you're watching a game of Newcastle. Oh my God. Yep, that's that's true. Up until <laughs> recently, we've been all right, but MIBR three rounds in a row, gonna get arrested. Good one, we'll pick up the pace. But Zantares and Calix, they've seen this too many times, and they have the perfect answer. Yota though, through the smoke, through the door, takes. Zantares and runs away with him for the final time in this half. But even with that exchange and the revenge kill coming to the forefront, MIBR find themselves a player behind. Xfloud has to vacate the premises. And now MIBR as the new landlord has evicted him from his home. Back to the B site, he will fall. And 
are more CTs here laid in wait, one of which is Woxic. That's the bomb that's been put down on the ground, and that puts this into such a tumultuous position for MIBR now. Just to retrieve the bomb is a huge deal, let alone somehow clutch out from this point. And Woody, on only four kills, having a bit of a slow best of three series so far, could make amends if he was to pull off what would end up being one of the plays of the entire tournament if he clutched this. He has no real utility other than a molly and a flash, so no HE he can toss to the back of the site. And obviously the other downside on that one, as soon as he throws this molly, they know roughly where he is. So now his days are numbered. The bullseye is painted on his back. And as he comes round, he does connect the very quick shot onto Oxic, turns it round, then nullifies x Flower, but he's about to get flanked if he's not careful. Tech 9, no idea how that didn't back the kill, but Emor comes in, bodyguards his IGL, and gets them across the finish line to a 9-6 half. Nice attempt there. But in the end, great hole coming out. I like the attempt from MIBR. You know, they're like, all right, this is a winning formula. There's fast upper hits. Let's do it again, right? And we, it all started when we had that round, that opening with the CZ, getting a couple of kills early on from Cello. So in the end, unfortunately, it doesn't bear any fruit. But still, six rounds here on the T side of you. You're feeling pretty happy. It's your map pick. You're leading by one map as well. The question mark here for all the Eternal Fire fans around the world is, Vince, have they done enough here? Have they got enough rounds on the CD side? Enough of a buffer to work with as they try and close this one out and take us to the deciding map, which will be on Dust 2. My question is, if Yota is a CT-sided player, are we going to see the same Yota as Vertigo? If we do, that could be a determining factor. Turtle has done more than enough, but now he needs the rest of his teammates to awaken from their slumber and to help him out. Eternal Fire, though, are coming outside, but simultaneously also occupying the ramp lobby area. There's no smoke's been deployed so far, so this would be a dry peak. And with a player up in heaven with the USP, this could get messy real quick. Zantaris, though, on that pick. Forces him away for a few extra seconds. Yoda behind the vents will not be able to help Woody out. He's mainly just keeping an eye out, a bird's eye view of the outside position. And now Emor's moving in through on the hut with two of his teammates. Julie's rattling off some fire from Turtle. Needs to be careful. He's actually got so much support structure around him. Oh, but Yota somehow doesn't get anything done from that Ooh. position. Fortunately, though, Exit is going above and beyond. And he has some feedback oh. from Exit and Cello as they lock it down. Yoda can breathe a sigh of relief and say a big thank you to his teammates because how he got no kills from that vent area is unbelievable. Exit might not necessarily be the big fragger for this team, but it looks like it's crunch time. That's when he seemed to deliver. We saw the way he closed out Vertigo as well in the 1v3, and that round was all an exit because Yoda completely fluffed it. Like, that was <laughs> that should have been, like, two kills. No one was looking his direction, but he even runs out of bullets. But Exit shutting it down with the upper bomb set as MIBR, they win the pistol. Of course, the force will be coming in Eternal Fire. It's going to be pistols all around. Woody blinded is going to be saved by Yota as they attempt to make their way in towards the fence. But amongst all the chaos, they are taking so much damage. However, the bomb is crossed on through, but they don't have the utility to cross onto the bomb site. Already a player lying in wait. Never mind, walks it. He's going to punch the numbers, but Cello's going to find him in the smoke, leaving Kalix alone in a one versus five. And he might be able to sneak on in the smoke, providing him some cover. I'm not saying it's doable. But there is maybe a small slither of a chance, especially that defusal is coming through the full 10 seconds. No kit with it, but Kallax isn't going to peek. He's hoping and praying it's a fake. But he's just found out first hand it won't be. However, I was going to say it won't be. However, I was going to say if he doesn't get a push from Woody, he would have been able to hold on to that Tech 9 and the Kevlar. And that could have at least maybe squeaked out a, a hero AK or two. With that bomb plant, it's not enough to get them a full purchase, but they have some options in terms of half buying or even fully investing here. So they're going to buy down to like $1,000 on a couple of players. Then this gives them max 10, some tech nines, a decent healthy dosage of weaponry. Yeah, could be another upper pop coming in for MIBR though. It's going to be yet another round with the weapons they had from the, pre from, from the prior one. Again, they didn't lose a single player, so the MP9 is still very much in play. 
the smoke's gonna be deployed towards outside, but it's all a ruse, Vince. It's all a ruse. It's gonna try and keep a couple of the players' attention focused towards outside, but the remaining members slowly creep back towards the lobby. Once again, it's gonna be the hit towards the upper bomb side, and timing is everything. Turtle's gonna smoke off the entrance of Squeak. Molotov's raining in. Now they know it's gonna be the upper hit once more. They come charging up through the flames. Emo, like a firewalker, finding one. He's on the site, but still alive. Never mind. Yota will strike. Walks in and Kalex have their work cut out for them and now it's down to Tech 9. And that's not going to bode very well. M-I-B-R. Get it done. And only lose one player in the process. But that was the appetizer. Now comes the main course. They have to deal with a fully bought up Eternal Fire. The only player that may be dishing a, a little bit less into this round is Antares, who had 3.7k, which is just enough for the AK-47 and some Kevlar. So he's lacking a bit of utility. The rest of the team, though, is very healthy indeed. This is a bonus round, though. Two MP9s, money brimming to the full, except for exit. If MIBR can pick this round up and get it done convincingly, not only can they pick up the weapons from the Corpse of Eternal Fire, but they'll be on a fast track to a vast lead. And they've got the first pick as well. Yoda comes out swinging. He's definitely turned it up on this second half. He's already up to 14 frags. Now, x Floud in the hut was thinking about maybe going for a peek, but thought better of that. And Eternal Fire on the back foot one more time. And they don't really have any real estate either, Blair. It's not like they've got any outside control. Mm -hmm. They haven't got down into ramp yet. They are literally stuck around T-spawn, only just starting to emerge outside, and they have a couple players in lobby. Yota's position here is pointed out because they have no eyes. Oh, it's all about Tommy Calix, though, aware of the possibility. Yota, somehow Calix has managed to sneak his way in. But it still needs a cross on over. Smokes will be deployed now by Eternal Fire. 48 seconds still on the clock. A lot of time to work with here. And right now, it's going to come down to Yoda to find information. You can see the smoke. It's really not going to obscure his vision. Now he knows where one player is. But the remaining members slowly creeping on up. Still, this MP9 in the hands of Turtle up close and personal could completely ruin Eternal Fire's day. They could. Just shy of 30 seconds, Turtle. This is tailor made for these kind of angles, especially when time is dwindling away. The Kalex gets one. It will only be one. There's some damage to X Flow, oh. but more importantly, Zentares bolsters up the aggression. And that battering ram has now found its target onto the A site. Cello maneuvers his way into Hut. May get an exit frag. There's one. Needs Yota to strike hard. Is waiting for Yota to have a bit of. Impact that he's coming in from the main side. Zentaras is relocated. Perfect cross and placement, but Cello removes him. Instantly takes his head off. And now X Floud is stuck with his back quite literally to the wall. And two players pushing him down. MIPR and their bonus have survived with two players. And there's the screams we were looking for. The, the passion war. is back. The war cry. What a round from Cello, Vince. What a round. Firstly, he's able to somehow find a perfect time to sneak into HUD, gets the first kill. Zantaris, as you pointed out, that crosser placement was absolute perfection. And we're talking about Zantaris. And Cello just completely deletes him. Shift deletes him from the server. What a round. Because I, I, cause firstly, it might be they get the opening pick. Eternal Fire, they really have nothing to work with. They go for that upper execute, and they get all the, they win all the duels. They do whatever they needed to do to get, win all the duels. They do whatever they needed to do to get the bomb plan. They have the man advantage, and the MIBR, they just say, yeah, no, not happening. We're still going to win the round. That is so huge for the Brazilians. 10 to 9 now. It was 9 6 as we enter the second half, and MIBR, they've strung four in a row together. Now, for Eternal Fire, though, they have the loss bonus, max loss bonus, plus they get the bomb down. So they will still have a buy, but they are yet to get around. And that is going to be weighing heavily on the shoulders over here. They have all the utility to work with right now. Once again, we're going to be setting up for the outside smoke. It's going to be one player that is Callus making his way towards outside. And once more, it's going to come down to Yota. He's going to be defending here. He's going to smoke off the entrance of Secret. I like that. It's a little bit of a cheeky one way afforded for him to try and spot someone, try and find someone crossing over from red. But also, looking at the smoke, if you're Eternal Fire, you are aware, you're cognizant of the fact that that smoke is for this very purpose. Oh, precisely. And we've seen the smoke down a couple of times already, but not really have any impact as of yet. A lot of damage to Zantares, can count himself lucky. Yota is going to draw out a HE, a Molotov, just to deal with his position. And they're having full focus over on Secret. They have smoked off main, now making moves in. Woody does even more damage. 
They're limping towards the outside now. Two players so low in the form of Kallax and Zantares, and he can scrap Zantares, and he can scrap Kallax as he puts two more notches on his belt. But Cello has found himself x Floud. Woody continues to go from strength to strength. He's picked up yet another one. He's on for the ace. Emor, though, they're going to be grouping up at Woxic. They really need to regroup real quickly. 41 seconds, a bit of a wide off angle here being held by Yoda. It's going to time the peak to perfection. And unfortunately, Woxic too far behind to trade. And what Woody started, it looks like Yoda is going to finish this one off. And look at Yoda immediately evacuating the premises. He's not going to give even an opportunity for Woxic to try and find a duel. For Woxic, flashbang, AK-47, 100 HP, but no time. He's got the bomb at 15 seconds. He's just going to have to just sit in the ramp room, just simmer. And MIBR, they have locked this one down. I want to point your attention to the money of MIBR. Yota, 7,000. Cello, MIBR. Yota, 7,000. Cello, sure he died. 10K, 11K. Exit turtle in the final member as well, all around the $4,000, $5,000 mark. And that is with the weaponry they already possess. They are not just starting to string these rounds together, Vince. They're starting to string them together convincingly. They're building up the economy, and they're really building up this base where they can try and just close this one out. Still, a number of rounds to go. Still the lead, just a couple. But the fact that Eternal Fire have not been able to crack this defense thus far in the second half is starting to be worrying if you're a Turkish fan. And MIBR go up in flames in the best possible way, but Woxic not losing any health. Entries onto the CT King, Yota, who's onto 16 frags, but he will be adding no more to that mark. Turtle, though, the audacity, moves over the corpse of his teammate to push through and gets the rewards, and Taurus goes down. He sees no more players, so it stands to reason either it's a fast ramp pit or it's outside. And they're already making moves outside. They know exactly what's coming up. Look how fast MIBR rotated and reacted to this threat. Spraying through the smoke, Turtle picks up another one. A bit of damage inflicted to x Cloud and Woxic. And Exit is here. He is laid in wait, anticipating that this play comes to fruition. Oh, one headshot in and Turtle down the vents. That is a masterclass from MIBR on how to find information, but more importantly, how to react to it. That was, I think, the best round we've seen for MIBR thus far. That was played to perfection. And even at the end, when they drop on down, just a commitment to holding onto that angle, Turtle dropping in from Vents, just shutting it down. Turtle has been incredible. Absolutely incredible this entire game. And not just the T side, mind you, on the CD side as well. He was a guy kind of leading the charge initially when MIB were able to scrap a couple of rounds here, here and there together. Okay, got a very still in mind though. That was kind of like the half buy coming in from Eternal Fire, but Woody, he just spraying down Emor through the fire and flames. That Taris is going to drop on down, but he's going to be caught limping and he will be taken down. That's a bomb dropped as well, Vince. They have the upper bomb side, but the bomb's lower, and Exit is still looking to farm these frags. X Flout left alone in a one versus five. With a minute and 22 seconds on the clock, MIBR have come alive. They are on fire, and they're looking to close this one out. The unbeaten CT Fortress continues to pick up the pace. After this round, assuming that x Cloud doesn't clutch a one versus 5 Can happen. It can. Stranger things have happened. Would effectively be like the Royal Flush of Counter-Strike, though. And instead, he just had a pair. Yeah. Unfortunately, that will not be MIBR this time around. That is seven rounds in a row on their CT side. Money accruing nicely. Fantastic reactions when it comes to rotations. They seem to always be a step ahead of their Turkish counterparts. It just seems to me as well, in that previous round, a bit of desperation crept in, Blair. We saw a couple players vent dive, a couple players pushing outside. Yep. The ideas were there, but they were disjointed. They were absolutely uh, disjointed. And that was also because of how disruptive MIBR are being over here. True, Eternal yeah. Fire, right? They're, they're trying the best, they're trying to get out to its upper bomb site. And then Zantaris, he just sneaks his way through and he's like, all right, I, I finally, I, I made it on four points of health through the flames, but gets absolutely destroyed. The bomb is down. And then even then, it's still a 3v5, still a chance for them to get a couple of kills to recover it, but then exit just shuts it down from the CT vent. Total 26 and 12. And MIBR have thus far been flawless on the CD side. Seven back to back to back to back to back. An eternal fire yet to find one. What's also really scary here is in seven rounds, they've only got two plants. Yeah. 
So it's not even like it's been close rounds. Most of them have been pretty lopsided. MIBR now getting outside quickly behind the red container. No. A play we haven't seen yet. Jonah with two through the smoke. That is just a kick straight to the plums of Eternal Fire. who are trying to get some kind of momentum outside, and it completely stops and repels the push. It's only Kallax that's limped downstairs. And that information, as well as one towards outside, I'm sorry, one towards secret, that's Kallax and a Molotov being a dead giveaway. Necessary peak in my opinion from Turtle, but he's feeling it. And now they know where the final two players are. One was towards outside, one was towards lower. And although at A4, A1 has been picked up by X Cloud, and although he's got, this is going to require a gargantuan, and a Herculean effort from him. He's towards upper, towards so he snaked his way back. And Calx is making a little bit of noise to try and keep the attention of MIBR towards the lower bomb side. But exit, he times the peak to perfection. And MIBR round 14 coming up in the next few seconds. Yeah, the other problem is that Kallax faked the, 